One of the reasons I wanted to get my pilot's license to be able to fly on trips. So, you know, flying around the pattern and training is one thing, but I wanted to go places. It's, it's a lot quicker, it's more fun, and it's a lot less stress. You're not dealing with people driving slow in the fast lane and all those fun things. And, uh, you know, the traffic is not going to be an issue. But the longer your flight cross country, the more planning you need to do because there's more territory to cover. There's more things that you have to avoid or more things that could go wrong. So I like to do a, a pretty thorough flight plan before I go to try to cover my bases, give me some outs and some options while I'm on the ground before I'm flying. And, have, and hopefully then if something happens in the air or I have to reroute, I already have kind of an option set so I'm not scrambling to find something in the plane. So I have an acronym that I use, it's RATAR. And what that stands for is route, airspace, terrain, altitude and range and I kind of go down in that order uh, range is an interesting one I'm not necessarily talking about the range of the airplane uh, the range of me the pilot is generally shorter than the range of the airplane airplane holds 50 gallons burns 9 to 10 gallons an hour so you've got a good four plus hours even with reserve in that plane that's at the top end of how long I want to fly usually three to four hours I'm ready to get out stretch maybe get something to eat uh, go to the bathroom, any number of things. So the range applies to the pilot as much as the plane. And in my case, uh, it actually applies a little more. So let's take a look how I plan the flight from Concord up to Green Bay uh, from my trip to Oshkosh. Now, I don't fly into Oshkosh. I don't want to deal with the mass arrivals, the mass departures. Uh, my days of camping under the wing are, are long gone. And the hotels are outrageously expensive. So I fly to Green Bay. Everything's cheaper. It's only about a 45 minute to an hour drive, depending on the traffic and straight down the interstate. So that's where I go when I go to Oshkosh as opposed to flying into Oshkosh itself. So let's take a look how I planned out this route. Now, if you're looking for tips on how to fly your cross country, your long cross country for your private pilot's license using pilotage and dead reckoning, that's not what this video is about. We're going to be using GPS and all the navigation we have at our disposal. This is more real world cross country traveling tips than it is working on your private. So let's take a look how I put this, this flight plan together. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come in. I'm just going to type in beginning and the ending point. Okay, so there it is, a nice straight line, just fly on the line, you get up there, everything's good. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. If only it were that easy. So the first thing that jumps out to me is this giant trek across Lake Michigan. That's more water than I wanna deal with. There's no flotation in my plane, nothing floats, not even me, really. So I wanna cut that leg out because if you look at this leg closer, this is a long way over water. We have, looks like here, about 115 miles over water. That's that's too far. I don't want to go that far. And even the width of this lake is roughly 65 miles, 50 to 65 miles right there. So I can't glide that far. Um, and the way I know that is I know the glide ratio of my plane. Anytime you're flying a plane, you should know the glide ratio. Um, that tells you how far horizontally you can glide for every thousand feet of altitude you have. Uh, so the DA-40, it's officially 8.9 to 1. Um, I've heard of other pilots say it's more like 10 or 11, but We'll just say we'll just say 9,000 just for now. So what that means is for every thousand feet vertically of altitude I have, I can glide 9,000 feet horizontally. So that's about a mile and a half for every thousand feet of altitude. So even at 10,000 feet, I am not making 25 miles back to shore. So I want to do something with this leg so I don't have to go over all that water. Now you would think I'm going to add a bunch of time to this route, but let's just track and see how much I'm going to add and get rid of some of the stuff I don't want to. So right now, Forflight is saying it's going to be five hours and 35 minutes. Now we know it's going to be longer than that because we're going to have to stop for fuel somewhere because I can't make that range. You see it's like 57 and a half gallons. The plane only holds 50 gallons, so we're going to have to do out something. But let's just see how much time I actually add. So to get rid of this water leg, I'm going to take and just drag my course line right over here to Gary, Indiana. And you can see that takes out most of the water right off the get-go. I'm pretty close to shore, and that's not a bad route. But since I'm over there, I'd like to fly under the Bravo and maybe do a little sightseeing. Uh, if it's a nice day, it's a, it's a nice uh, view of the city skyline of Chicago as you're going down the water. So I'm going to plan on that, and if, if it doesn't happen, I can always fly over the Bravo if I want and get above 10,000 feet. But let's, let's assume that it's going to be good weather and we can get down there. So I'm going to take and go to an RNAV waypoint right here at Rainer. And you see that takes us right down the right down the shoreline, which is nice. Um, but you can see it takes us also right through a TFR. And you say, well, you know, that might not be there when you're flying through. And you're right, but there's two baseball stadiums there. And during this time of year, there's it seems like always one of them is active with a TFR. So we want to account for that. And I can't see any kind of waypoints that are going to help me plot out anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hop over to the IFR chart. 
and you can see right there there's a very nice waypoint that's just outside that TFR I can drag my course up there to Laird and I think that will take care of this section of the flight yep you can see it comes right down we'll have to go over the over this Delta right here at 3100 feet we're gonna have to go under these two Bravos, but that's not a big deal. We're over water, so there's really nothing to hit out there. And then as we come along up here, we'll have to go again over a Delta, but stay under the Bravo. There's a 400 foot margin there between 32 and 36. So that part of the route looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna follow the route down back towards my starting point using my RATAR uh, acronym and see if I find anything else that's a problem. Remember, that's gonna be airspace, terrain, or altitude. That's what we're looking for. We'll work on the range in just a second. So as I come down from Gary, Indiana, I can see right here, there's some MOAs. Those usually aren't an issue at all. There's a Delta there. That's not an issue. We'll go right over that. We're coming down and we do come into the Cincinnati Bravo. I can fly over top of that if I want to. Um, I'm probably not going to get to go through it. Usually they'll route you around it or, or make you go some places you don't necessarily want to go. Um, so over is an option, but I think right here, this is about where the point where I'm going to need to stop to get some fuel and take a rest anyway. So I think we can route around Cincinnati and not even have to worry about them at all. So I think we're going to be in this area around lunchtime, so it might be nice for food, but I do have kind of a criteria I look for on airports where I'm going to stop for fuel stops. One is obviously they have to have fuel, so you have to check and make sure that you know that they actually do have fuel available either self-serve or full-serve uh, the other is I try to find airports that maybe have two crossing runways so in case we run into some some winds that aren't anticipated I have options on the runway and I'm not dealing with a big crosswind um, so generally I'll stay away from Bravos and Charlies they take a little bit longer more radio work to get in and out of and their fuel is usually a little more expensive so a Delta or an Echo are, are usually my best bets now if I'm looking for lunch at an airport I use an app called fly to lunch that helps identify airports that have restaurants right on the field so I don't have to worry about crew cars or, or getting off the field or anything like that so what I'm going to do on the website is I'm going to type in Cincinnati because I've identified that as the place where I'm going to have to stop to get fuel at some point and I'm going to put it in the website now you can see too that the with max distance I can specify how far away from Cincinnati I want to search and I can also make it search for airports that either have a restaurant on the airport or walk away, drive away, lunch. I'm going to keep it on the airport. I don't want to fool around with, with trying to get off the airport. So now if we press the search button, it comes up with a list of airports that have different restaurants and you can see there's, there's different ratings and uh, how far away they are from the point you, you said. So right here on the top, Columbus Municipal kind of jumps out to me. It's got a pretty good rating on the restaurant. It's not too far from Cincinnati, so it's in the area I want to be. It's a Delta and it does have intersecting runway. So I should be covered pretty well for wind. So that's what I'm gonna do. K, Bravo, Alpha, Kilo. So I'm gonna go back to my flight plan. Type in K, Bravo, Alpha, Kilo. And I'm gonna slide that right back over here in the middle. And that gives me my waypoint. Now, obviously, I'm going to have to break this flight plan into two parts after I get done to calculate the fuel and everything. But for planning purposes, I'm just going to keep it all in one area. So right now, we've got our destination stop. It's right there about in the middle. It's, it's gotten us around the Cincinnati airspace. We do have some restricted airspace here, so we'll have to check on that and make sure it's not hot before we go through it. But I think it's taking care of all our airspaces. And as we come along, we're back to our beginning. And yes, we are good. We'll come out from under this Bravo. That's not an issue. So the last thing we're going to look at is altitude. And as I look at this route, the only thing that jumps out at me that's going to be an altitude issue for terrain is right here. And that's the Blue Ridge Mountains. So you can see as my route goes over the mountain, 6,300 feet is the tallest thing in that quadrangle. So I'm going to have to fly above that. So to go 2,000 above that would be 8,500, which is not a uh, IFR route. So I'm going to pick 8,500 for now for VFR. And if I have to change to IFR, I'll bump it to 10,000. That'll give me more than 2,000 feet. So I'll have the clearance that I need to make uh, ATC happy. All right, so let's take a look at the finished plan. And this is actually the route that I ended up flying up to Green Bay. And let's go down our acronym and see how we did. So route, we've got the route all in. Airspace, we've looked, we've cleared all the airspaces that we have to worry about. I don't even think we need to talk to anyone as long as it's a VFR route. Uh, terrain, we've looked at that. We have our mountains covered right there with our altitude. And range, we have our fuel stop, which is about midway. 
which ought to be about two and a half to three hours. So that's good for the plane. It's good for me. And that place has fuel and it has lunch. All right, so lastly, let's see how long I've added to this. Remember, the straight line route was about five hours, 35 minutes. This route gives me everything I want, follows my RATAR acronym, gives me lunch, fuel, the whole thing. So let's see what I've added. So from five hours, 35 minutes, we went to five hours, 48 minutes. So we only added 13 minutes and we took care of everything on my acronym and now I'm happy with this plan. I have plenty of outs, airports along the way. I think I've taken care where I don't have to worry about flying through airspaces or monitor that uh, too closely because if I stay on my route, I'm good to go. So I hope this was helpful for you. This is the way I do it. I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but I really enjoy having this route all worked out ahead of time. I can put it into my GPS, assuming the weather is like I expect, um, you know, I can fly it just like this and it helps me stay on top of things where i'm not having to worry about so much when i'm flying and taking care of other things in the plane so feel free to use it remember ratar and i think you'll have a great cross-country flight